All right, guys, we're going to be talking about Rivian today. I promised you this one in my X post that you can see on the right. You can see how much I love the headlights on this thing, too. I, I won't lie, though. I have actually started to like it a little bit more. In person, I think it looks better. But, um, yeah, so we're going to go over a lot of stuff on Rivian today. We're going to talk about the path the company's been down, some of the some of the things I thought about them originally. We're going to talk about where they're at now. We're going to look at financials. We're going to look at their product line real quick and talk about some of that and some of the things that are coming. They have earnings coming up next Wednesday. And then there's the R2, their latest vehicle, is going to be debuted on March 7th. So there's a lot of stuff happening with these guys. And I just wanted to cover that and give you my thoughts as an investment. Now, to be clear, I am not a financial advisor. Read the little blurb down at the bottom. It says I'm a high school dropout who's a wannabe economist and a wannabe analyst. And it says that I'm not financially responsible for anything that you do with your money. We're all big boys and girls. I am just talking about my thoughts and then I'm trying to express them to you and you make your own decisions. Okay, so let's be very clear on that point. We're all big boys and girls. All right, so let's move on. Financials. There's a couple things I wanted to point out here. One, revenue. Beautiful. It's growing. It's growing quick. If you look at Q, uh, let's just go to Q3 of 2022 to where they are now. That's a beautiful number. You can see revenue growth year over year, 149%. Again, that's great. Now, the big thing, the thing that everybody is going to complain about with this company is their net income being negative by over a billion dollars a quarter. That is a very, very legitimate concern. And it's one I have as well. I will say this, though, if you look, the overall trend minus this last quarter here, I think they took a hit a little bit, too, because of Amazon deliveries. Amazon doesn't like to get their commercial vehicles. I'll show you what that is in a second, these vans that they have. Uh, in Q3, Q4, they don't like to receive them because they're so busy with shipping that they just don't want to create a mess. And I get that. So um, I think a lot of this was just carried over inventory. But if you guys know another reason, if I'm missing that at all, please say something, but that's what I believe caused this extra hump going down here. And uh, I don't know if that'll be cleared out in, in Q4. They might have a little more of this, but we'll see what they guide to. Now, cash flow is going up. Love seeing that. Love seeing this number going up. That's the direction we want to go. It was going the wrong way before. Shares outstanding. The, the share dilution isn't as high as it used to be. And also, I just want to show something here. You can see that stock-based comp was a really big portion um, back in 2022 and 2021. It's a much smaller amount now. And a lot of these people, they have a very vested interest. Right now, Insider, you can see that we have uh, almost 30% uh, are insiders. Another quick thing to note while we're in here, short interest is very high. It's 15.22%, uh, almost 102 million shares as of this being reported. I'm, it should maybe a 24, 48 hour delay. I'm not sure. So that's a lot of short interest on this company. They're also down almost 94%. I'll show you the chart in a little bit. So I think it's foolish to be short a company that's down 94% unless you're just hedging a bet at zero because you think they're going to fail. And I don't know that they're going to. Now, their biggest stakeholder is Amazon by far, almost 17% of the company. I think this is great. Initially, this is a huge detriment to Amazon. It made them look good, but... When, they're, when the stock IPO'd and it was worth a ton of money. And I think they sold into some of that too because they're smart. And they, like me, knew that this company was incredibly overvalued at that point in time. Because again, when they IPO'd, they were like over here making no money and burning 10 times as much. So in the beginning, let's look here. Uh, 2020, let's go to 2021. These don't perfectly align. Net income, negative $414 million in, Q, in Q1 of 2021. Let's go to Q4. Um, Q4 is negative two and a half billion dollars of 2021. And then over here, what did they make? 54 million. Woof. <laughs> Again, those are not great numbers, but they've done so much better. Look at this. Their net income this last quarter in Q3 was 1.337 billion, but then they lost 1.367. These are much more in line than they were previously. And again, I think that this company is on, on the path to be able to go, you know, sub a billion in losses. And they still, again, you can see the cash burn and it's still occurring, but they have roughly $9 billion left. So they still got two years of cash burn 
available to them. And then I also, again, Amazon is their biggest stakeholder. And I think Amazon would dip their toes in this company. They perform well enough where they would dip their toes in if they were looking for financial assistance. That's my bet. To be very clear, I do not think Rivian is better than Tesla. I am a Tesla fanboy through to my core. I got a Cybertruck and a Roadster. Where is it? Over here. Cybertruck? Roadster. Wow, that's hard to do. It's hard to get used to that. Sitting behind me here. I, I've got a book of Elon Musk. Where is it? Right, right there. So, <laughs> I love Tesla. It's by far one of my favorite investments, especially long-term heading into the next decade. And I want to be hugely supportive of them. This is something where I think these guys could end up being like a tenth of Tesla. A tenth. That's the bet. So it's not like I'm saying these guys are better. Just let's be clear. Estimates. It looks like uh, Q4, there's an estimate that the revenue might be reduced a little bit, that they're still going to have negative EPS. EBIT estimates you know, look just as bad, if not worse. Not a lot of progress there. And that's fine. I actually don't think that matters that much. Um, let me see what else we have over here. EV sales ratio. Again, it was crazy before. Revenue per, per employee. Look at that launch. Look at the launch in revenue per employee from where they were at to where they are now. And that needs to get better, and it will. I have no doubt that'll get better. Uh, profit sales ratio. Yeah, it's getting better. Definitely looking better, right? Heading in the right direction. So, real quickly, I wanted to talk... Their vehicles, so they've got the dual all-wheel drive, the performance dual, the quad. These things do anywhere from like 260 to 400 miles, roughly, it looks like. They have comparable stats, probably a little bit less than what Tesla is. And they they try to do like their own wild charging or charging location Rivian thing. And they've got like that little adventure network. I don't think they'll end up developing this out a lot. I think it's good for what they're trying to do. They're trying to get you to like state parks and stuff like that. It's good for its use. But these guys have also partnered with Tesla. And I think that they're even going to be changing their adapters in the next year or two, maybe in the R2, to be Tesla charging adapters just to work at the base with the Tesla network. And they're supposed to be coming with an adapter plug to get people on the Tesla network for these older vehicles too. So that's good. I've heard that they do over-the-air updates. They do a lot of the stuff that Tesla does. I've heard that it's not as good as far as, like, their interface. But they have a mobile app. They've got, like, some of this driver detection stuff. They've got the security thing. They do the over-the-air over updates. Like, it's it's a good vehicle. And they have a lot of other unique things in the vehicle as far as, like, what it can do and, like, flashlights in the door and just kind of cool things for people that love utility, right? I don't love the headlights. I actually hated them. They uh, they do have the rock crawl feature too, and and they have the ability. I think I don't know if they can do the tank turn where you can like rotate around in a circle without going anywhere. But these things are pretty cool. They're nice vehicles. The inside of them is beautiful. Again, they feel very Tesla isk with the with the vehicle and just very clean, kind of minimalist but very clean. They've got two displays. I've heard that some of these. They can be a little quirky and maybe not do well in the cold, but a lot of that's, you know, just hearsay or, or just, you know, individual perspective. Now, I, I do want to say that these things, the R1, the R1T, the truck, and the R1S, the SUV that we're looking at right here, they are only eligible right now for the third, uh, for $3,500 or thirty seven fifty of the tax credit. So they only get half, probably because of sourcing requirements. They, the CEO did say that the R2, they're looking to get the full credit. And uh, they also, if you look over here at the commercial van, they currently get the full credit on the commercial van too. And the commercial van is the is a partnership that they have. They have a contract, I should say, with Amazon to produce over 100,000 of these uh, between now and 2030. And they also are looking to sell these to other commercial companies. And I could see like UPS, FedEx taking them up on that and starting to produce these kind of cars or buying these from them and then putting their logos on them and branding. I could I could see that. This is a this is the kind of vehicle that Tesla isn't doing. Nobody's doing this really in the EV sector that's like a good brand. And so I could see these taking off for like UPS, FedEx, maybe even the Postal Service. I don't know if you guys saw the Postal Service's vehicles, but we got to look that up. US Postal Service EV. You just got to see this thing. It is painful. 
it is painful. What what is that? What is this weird looking slam faced? Oh, they're not gonna give me a good picture. But what is this? This is the actual vehicle right here. That is the vehicle right there. I don't know what that is. That is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So again, I can see the government getting a lot of ridicule and then wanting to move on away from this and instead using one of these because people are going to get used to this. They're going to know it as the Amazon vehicle and then it, then other people will buy it too because if nothing else, the recognition. And again, it's an EV. They get about 150, 160 uh, miles of range, which is just about perfect for just puttering around a city and dropping off packages. Again, the R2, March 7th, 10 a.m. Pacific time. That's going to be coming out. This vehicle is rumored to be sub 40,000 or close to it. Now, I'm assuming that that's probably like with tax credit. And then the initial deliveries will be like similar to the Cybertruck where you're paying extra for it for the Foundation Series maybe or something. They'll probably take a lot of cues from Tesla uh, on these so that they can lower their burn on the new production of these. I don't know. I've got mixed feelings about this. It's not till 2026. So what they're really trying to do I think that's probably smart to have this be a little bit further out. They seem to be doing the Tesla roadmap, I'm not going to lie. But I, I think it's smart that they focus right now on mass production of the R1s and their commercial vehicle. They've already got two very distinct groupings of vehicle. Well, I mean, the SUV, the truck, and the commercial, so technically three. But So they should focus on those and get the ramp done on those. And then that that way they're, they're bleeding less money and look, looking in a better financial position before they go for this next phase anyway. so But I'm excited to see what they offer, and I think it could get some renewed vigor in the stock as people look at it and they get excited about it. Because again, this is a this is one of those stories, right? It's a, It was a high flyer, everybody was excited about it, and now it's been destroyed. And uh, this is the time where I get excited about stocks, right here, when I when they start to prove themselves. Not, I mean, these guys still got a ways to go, but when they start to prove themselves and you, you they, they're down 94% from their highs, or at least this one was. It's only down 91% now, so it's doing really great. That's a joke, sarcasm. All right, R1 Rivian commercial vans. So they Q, Q3, they did 16,304, so very small delivery numbers. Total production this year, they revised their guidance higher, unlike Lucid, to 54,000. And I like that, right? Like I like the fact that they're increasing production and as they're doing that, their burn rate is getting a little bit better, their, and their, their operating expenses are getting better, and their revenue is growing. This is what we want to see for them to be able to scale. I don't know if there's much more in the slide. Yeah, and I got it all inverted. We're going to skip that. We're going to move to the stock and actually show you what we're looking at here. I'm going to widen this out a little bit. So the stock, again, train wreck down to 94%. It was like in the 11 range. It got to a high of... 180. I feel so bad for the people that bought this thing at 180. I always feel bad buying stocks like this because there's so much damage. There's people, this video will probably just get hate just because so many people have been hurt by this stock that <laughs> they don't even want to talk about it. Same thing with Palantir, same thing with every PayPal and all these others that I, Hood and SoFi and every other thing that I bought that has went down a ton. Uh, no, everybody hates them because they, they lost so much money and they just, they can't, uh, there's so much emotion t tied with a loss that um, it makes it hard for people to see the truth. It's the same thing with gains. People ignore reality because they get so excited by the money they're making. And I mean, sometimes I'm even guilty of that. Hopefully not for long. I try to be, try to, try to not be wrong for long. But again, so here's what I'm looking at. This company right now is a $15.67 billion company. Right now, I think Tesla's at $750 billion. Let me see here. They might even be a little bit higher. Uh, no, I'm sorry, $640 billion. So we're $640 versus $15. This is a much smaller company. And here's the thing. I think Tesla is too low for what they should be. I think my bet, I've got calls on Tesla, and I think that it could, it could go up to $1.5 to a $2 billion company in the next two and a half years. I don't think that's crazy at all. Um, so that would that would make me a decent amount of money. But if we're, so when I'm looking at Rivian, what I'm trying to figure out is, okay, so if I think that in two years, maybe Tesla's a one and a half billion dollar company, one to one and a half billion, because again, I got the two and a half year leaps, but let's say in two years, that's how long my leaps are on this one, that Tesla is 
is a one, one to a one and a half billion dollar company. What can these guys be? And real quickly, I should throw out my disclaimer. It's down at the bottom right here. It's down right here too. It says that I'm a wannabe economist, self-made millionaire, um, high school dropout who just does this for fun and is not offering financial advice. I'm just telling you what I'm finding here. It's your job to figure out whether an investment is a good deal. It's your job to look at what I say and be like, huh, does that make sense to me? And sh what is the appropriate allocation? I should talk to a financial advisor. It's your job to do that stuff. It's not mine. Okay, so anyway, that's done now. But I think this stock, if I look at the valuation of Tesla in the next couple of years and say that it could be one, one to one and a half billion pretty easily, then all I'm looking for for this company is 45 billion to maybe 90 billion, 100 billion. So I'm looking for this thing at max to be one tenth the size of Tesla. I don't think that's crazy. And if 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 they were they made up 200% in gains and got to $52, which is just the first fib on the retracement here, just getting back to the first fib level. If they did that, they would still be down 71 and a half percent. And I could make off of this. This is what I this is my vested interest. I own this, right? I'm not I've already bought these. Now I'm trying to tell you why why I bought them. So I own 150 contracts January 16th uh 2026. Average price 3.363. I have put their previous all-time high in here and then I'm going to put a little bit lower too because you should see red. If you only see green on these screens, you're lying to yourself. Let's put even lower. Let's just say they suck. Let's say they go to $5. That's a 66% loss on a stock that's already down 91%. Okay? All right. So I'm not looking at the loss part. You look this up on your own. Optionsprofitcalculator.com. Now, that first level I was talking about, that 200% gain where they'd still be down 71% off their highs, that's around the 52 level. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to give myself about a year and a half for this to play out because I think that's more honest, right? Um, it's not going to... And you know what? Let's give it out. Let's do like a year and three quarters, right? So let's say by October, October, I would have 579% gains off of 233 so this is just a hair under 3x. This is the lowest of low levels, and this is giving this a lot of time. Now, if it happens earlier, I make more money, and then it's a nice 3x, right? It's getting closer to 3x if it's a year and a half from now or a little over a year. Now, again, I, is that possible? Yes, that's possible. I don't know. I'm trying to give myself as much time as possible, and I'm trying to be as realistic on the targets as I can be. So I'm going to say uh, high twos, low threes. For this is kind of my bottom target, right? Now, the next target I have is the next FIB. And this, if it gets to this first one, there's a real good chance it could get to the next one. So $75. Let's look at roughly what that is. We only have 78 to 72. So whatever. We'll just go near the end here. So 381% would get us 1229 around $670,000, $580,000. Almost two years out on the contract off of an original contribution of over 54. So again, this is a 10, 12 X, 10, 12 X over a period of less than two years. If you guys can find a lot of easy investments that will give you 10 to 12 X on reasonable targets over the next two years, you let me know. I'm interested. But let's say things get crazy and for some reason we make it to the dot six one eight, the golden retracement zone. I actually think it could do this if Tesla's doing well and these guys have executed and there are ones coming out and they've done it or I'm sorry, there are twos coming out and they've done a great job selling commercial vehicles and selling the trucks. I think they could get to this level and this level right here, right here at 114. And I'm not going to show you the price of the all time high because I just don't think that's very possible. It could have it could have happened. Maybe I'll show you for like a second and then tell you it's not possible. Now, 603 percent return again. This would still be down. What would this be down? How much would we be down? If we got to that level off the high, we would still be 36% off the high. 
So still 36% down off the high, not even close to new all-time highs. This one would give us <clears throat> roughly $1.2 million off of 54,000. Uh, 22x. 22x. And if it happens sooner than that, you know, maybe it'll be, well, it's not much difference. There isn't much. A lot of the extrinsic value is already gone. So it's more intrinsic at this point. But yeah, so, I mean, these are great. This is this is a great number, right? And then if things really got crazy and we went to the all-time high, it's just stupid. It's a 40x, right? I don't think that's going to happen. And I wouldn't hold that long. I sell much sooner than that. I would be probably, again, I like to consider myself conservative, even though some might not deem me that way. I would look more towards this being realistic right here where you can make three or $400,000 and then maybe up to 600 or close right up here um, off of that. So, so again, like a 7x to 10x, I think this is pretty reasonable. But I guess that's this is kind of the gist of what I'm trying to show you here. I think that I also wanted to say, I do think that this could be buoyed by interest rates coming down. I think we're real close to that. I think May we start to do that. And I think when interest rates start to come down, if the economy is not taking a massive dive, and I'm not sure it will be, because I actually think we're getting record amounts of retirees and people that are kind of leaving the workforce, people like me that did it, you know, that are doing it now, but I did it like almost four years ago. But there's people that are still like, you know what, my investments have done good. My house is up 35, 40%. I'm just going to I'm going to take out a home equity line or something in the future. If I need money, rates are going to come down so I can just do that when I need it. And then at the same time, like, I'm just tired of working. And so you got re people retiring and then them trying to fill with um, people. And I think I think unemployment can remain low for a while because there's just – there's so many people that could fill those jobs. And then we have, like, over 8 million illegal immigrants. So, like, not to go on a tirade here, but if – any in any way those people start to work legally or, or illegally that that will keep unemployment down too so if unemployment staying down and gdp is strong which we're kind of seeing and people's real estate is up 35 plus percent and they can take against the equity and we got rates coming down and they can feel richer i just think that the market could get a lot better than people anticipate and i think some are anticipating that now and that's why we've been pushing so hard i don't know how long it'll last we'll probably take a breather at some point but I do think that that this could buoy Rivian in the quarters ahead and through this year and into next year. And with the leaps that I'm looking at, and again, I should throw out this too. When I throw out a leap, look at the price on it and see if it's anything like what I, what I did on this options video. After I make things like this, there's a lot of people that watch them. Eventually, I might make them more exclusive or in, exclusive. Whatever. I might make it to where less people see it right away, like maybe paying members of YouTube or something, because it's just people just rush into stuff and it's a mess. And I don't want you guys pump, pumping my bags. I made a video, Options 101, that shows you how to figure out what option chains you should be looking at, which ones are going to have the volume, and which ones are the ones that give you the best return, and, and how to identify that with an options calculator. Look at other opportunities, not just the thing I'm doing. Unless you just want to pump my bags, look. Because you could jump into this and it could go up a lot over a short period of time if there's enough interest. So just be smart and and uh, and use the tools that I give you so that you can make your own decisions. Anyway, I love you guys. I think I pretty well covered this. If there's anything I missed that should have been in included... Um, I could always amend to this later on. So please let me know down below and I'll do further research. But I will be doing um, I will be doing the earnings call next Wednesday. And then I will be there for the live stream reveal too of the R2 because I want to see what that looks like. I'm excited about it. So anyway, follow me if you want to see those things. Uh, like, subscribe, ring the bell, please. And if you want to join, uh, I've ch changed something recently where the market recap that I do daily Monday through Friday... If you want to be a part of chat, you got to at least be a member and join. And that's $3 for the little guys. It's called the Starter Pack. The other stuff doesn't really do much except get you clout right now anyway. Um, it probably will do more later, maybe like with video releases and timing and stuff. So that you have the information sooner but um, and my thoughts sooner. But for now, again, if you want to participate in chat or if you just want to help support me in the work that I'm doing, 
um, that's a great way to do it. Anyway, love you guys. Hope you get value from this. And uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you later. See you in Market Recap. Bye.